Welcome to the Gilson Engineering Flow Lab. My name is Josh Snodgrass from the Gilson Engineering Louisville office. Today we're going to set up and configure the Siemens Solids Impact Flow Meter. In case you are unaware, Siemens offers a variety of belt scales as well as these Solids Impact Flow Meters. Today we're going to be looking at the WFS330 Flow Box with the ILE37 Sensing Head. Upon arrival, your impact flow meter will come in two separate pieces. Once the sensing head has been mounted to the flow box, per manufacturer's recommendations, you will then need to confirm that you have removed the shipping screws on the dampening bowl. Once the shipping screws have been removed, you have to take a look at the dampening bowl itself to confirm that it is full of dampening fluid. If it is not full of fluid, you will need to fill the bowl until there is no air bubbles shown. Once you've confirmed that your dampening bowl is full of fluid, you will need to make the necessary wire connections. In our case, the signal conditioner card is located on the sensing head itself. In some situations, the, sen the conditioner card is located in the integrator. Please note, when making these connections, it is important to pay attention to the color codes between the conditioner card and the LVDT. But when wiring from the conditioner card to the integrator, you just miss, must stay consistent. Once you've made the necessary wire connections, you need to verify that your LVDT is zeroed and spanned. To do this, you will need to connect a voltmeter to cross the green and yellow wires. Your zero position at resting position in the sensing head is going to be 100 millivolts AC plus or minus 50. Your span will range from your zero position and increase towards one volt. If we squeeze the sensing head, we'll be able to see this demonstrated. Notice that it returned back to the zero position. With that being said, this uh, sensing head is spanned correctly. Once you have all your hardware set up, you'll then need to go to the integrator and perform an initial setup. The first few parameters are just your basic language, date, time, units. Once you come to parameter 11, it's where things start to get important. Parameter 11 is your design rate. That is the rate at which your system is built from. Design rate is your nominal flow rate for your process. Once you know your design rate, you also need to come up with your test rate. Your test rate is 60 to 80% of your design rate. The test rate is also what your calibration weights are based from. Please see the following diagram. couple things to point out. When you're in run mode, if you want to change parameters, you will press PAR button twice, enter the parameter that you desire, and then press enter again. Once on the parameter, in order to change the value entered, you will need to press the enter button, the value that you want to select, and then press enter again. This will apply your changes. In order to leave the parameter screen, you'll go and press the Run button. From the Run button, we can change your total or reset your total by pressing Reset Total, Clear, and then Alt Display to return back to Run Mode. Once you've calculated your test rate, you'll then need to do an initial zero and an initial span. Initial zero is parameter 377. You need to make sure that the test weight is off of the sensing head and press 1 to start. The 
We'll accept this value, do a second zero to see if there's any deviation. The deviation is minimal, actually zero, so we're ready to do an initial span, which is parameter three eight eight. When doing the initial span, you'll need to hang your test weight. The test weight will be hung on this hook and across this pulley. On the integrator, you will need to press 1 to begin your span. We'll accept the span and return, remove the test weight and return to run. Right now it is at resting state. We'll hang the test weight again and confirm that it goes to our test rate. Our test rate is approximately 7,100 pounds per hour. So in this case, it looks like everything is good. Okay. Now that we have everything set up, we're going to demonstrate the flow meter in action. We have approximately 50 pounds of plastic pellets in the hopper above. I'm going to pull this knife gate, and then we're going to watch it flow. And that concludes our demonstration. For more information, please give us a call or visit our website. Thank you. Have a great day.